Welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Jill. And today we're going to actually install the rear section of the lift kit for the Rough Country uh, two inch uh, yeah. just spacers, is what they are. So far, we've done the other side just out of practice and see what it entails. Way easier, I'll tell you that much right now. A lot easier. All I need is really two sockets, three if you want to use a socket to take off the uh, lug. The lug. So I'll go through the tooling right now. Again, with the instructions, there are some things that don't really say that you should do, but we'll show you that in just a second. So right now, we'll go through the tools. Assortment of Phillips head because you are going to have to take out the liner. It does not say that, but I'll show you why I'm telling you to take out the liner completely. Uh, hammer, obviously, you're going to have to pop out some of the bolts. Uh, the rear bolt right there is pretty big. It does move out of the way fairly easy. I just wouldn't stick my finger in there. I'd rather have a hammer and a screwdriver. Uh, 15 millimeter ratchet or wrench. A breaker bar with a 27 for that giant bolt right there ratchet for when you actually get it loose that right there is for the 15 millimeter nuts that you put on the uh, spacer and then of course your 19 millimeter uh, breaker bar and extension or breaker bar and socket for the lug nuts this right here is just in case we did have one of the clips and I'll show you in the video what I'm talking about when I actually pull the item off. So we'll go ahead and pull this out. So we're gonna pull the fender flare out and we're gonna pull this out. This is just to get it out of the way so I don't damage it in case I hit it with something or bump my head or whatever, we don't break anything. So we'll pull this out and we'll pull this out just in a second. So. Okay, first off, this is the only thing it tells you to take off to get these out. No offense, but there's no way I can get that out. So we're gonna take off the entire thing. That way we can access it. And I'll show you how much access you have right now. That's it. No offense, that's gonna cut up your hand if you try to get to it, or when you try to pull, uh, pull it out, you're gonna end up breaking the clips or damaging the inner fender liner. Also, when you take off these, the fender flares, some of these pop off. That's what this is for. Right there. Don't damage it. You don't scratch this. And Jill will hold that. So we'll go ahead and put you over there, take off the rest of the fender liner, and be right back. Yep, yeah, away we go. Yep. Could be worse. Could be doing the front end over again. No, that sucks so bad. Plus it's safe with you further away. You can't kick me. Hey. So what I was talking about is now you have room to actually access this. If you get the front bolt, wouldn't be bad because you actually have it right there. But to get the back bolt and the back bolt in here, you're gonna have to do a lot of maneuvering for that inner fender liner to actually get in there. Most likely you're gonna end up damaging the fender liner or ripping it or cutting the hell out of your hands. Again, I'd rather remove it. That way I don't damage it and be able to put it on because I'm sure that thing's like a million dollars now. So <laughs> there you go. And before I take all the bolts out, I will break the torque on this one and get this one sort of removed. So if Jill wants to put the camera down just in case, she needs to get the emergency jack to get me out of it. Who knows? That might be good on YouTube. So 
So first off, uh, this bolt right here is extremely tight. The other side was a little bit easier because I had all the room right here to step on the, uh, the, the breaker, breaker bar. bar and it wasn't bad. This right here is in the way on this side, so it gives a little bit less room. Once I got it all the way down, the next step was right under this. So obviously I can put the hand there or the foot. So I had to pull on this side. We did use the jack to break the torque just a little bit until I was able to get it. Now, as like I said in the beginning of the other video, and I'll say at the beginning of this one before we actually start it, is I do have a lot of safety things in here. I have the tire under this in case it falls, it's only gonna go as far as the tire. I do have both front wheels chalked and the brake is on. Now, the brake on this side is obviously not on the ground, but I never bring both tires on the back off the ground because then I have no brake on whatsoever. So always leave at least one tire on the ground, unless you're on a perfectly flat surface or you're on a, a lift. So here you go. Okay, and there you go. Way easier than the last, the front. Now, we did kind of go on that before. This right here is not needed. It actually tells you to remove the cotter pin, or not cotter pin, but roll pin. Uh, we'll go ahead and just remove that. It really just is alignment. It's kind of glued in there. There you go. So that'll be removed, and then we can put this in. Now, the one thing with this is we don't need to twist it because we just put the shock in backwards. That's the way to do it because once you finally get this in, there you go. Still and fits. As you nice. remember from our first video where we did the front, we actually had to drill out the holes because the powder yeah. coat made the holes just a little bit too small and then he went into the shed and pounded those in yeah so you're so, gonna have to do that to all four of them yeah did i did end up just cutting out the powder coat in there with the drill just to get or sorry in here with the drill obviously just to get these to fit in otherwise you'll be scraping the threads and probably flattening the threads of this nothing huge you can do it with a file if you have it so and then go once around just to make sure so always double check all the hardware before you put it together especially yeah, this last thing you need is a shock falling off yeah. <laughs> that would suck that'd make for an interesting ride Just like a cake decorator, wait till the last bit and says, yep, yeah, look what I did. Oh, shut up. Cake, te cake decorator, Jill. Mm -hmm. So she takes credit of all the stuff going on at the body shop. See what I got, I got done? Not the guys did it, <laughs> she did it. Really? I hear that all the no, time. No, you don't. I give full credit to my guys. <laughs> I hear what she says about you. If any of you guys are watching. <laughs> Whatever. I'll start recording it. I don't know what that was. Yeah, so underneath where that bolt at, it's not straight, it's like this. That's why the jack was in the way. A little bit of persuasion. Okay, so, gotta put the ginormous 
nut on. So this one you don't need a wrench on. It actually has a piece that holds it from moving. So the only bad thing with this one is you can't run it on by hand because you have a, a little piece right here keeping it from moving it. So you literally have to run the bolt down with a ratchet all the way. This does take a tremendous amount of torque. I will get the torque wrench out after we drive it for around the block a couple times and then I'll jack everything up and torque it. I just want this, it the. Went ahead and torqued all these, uh, torqued that. So again, this already has a piece on it that keeps it from moving so you don't need a wrench on this. If you need a wrench or a ratchet on the other side, you will need a breaker bar. We are gonna to torque all this stuff once we're done, but we're gonna drive it around, let everything settle, and then torque everything, including the front, which we haven't done yet, but we will be. So next is a fender liner. Enjoy. So if you're wondering where that piece went, it came from this piece right here. It pops out, you see the little hole, put it in with the uh, tab side up, slide it into place, stays there. So put this back on, secure it, and go from there. Okay, the only reason we're doing this right now is because since we jacked up the car or lifted it this lowered the suspension which means i have to jack up the the axle to actually put the tire back on now that i got the tire on we got to jack up the car remove that and then we'll let it back down go ahead and jack it up Verify this is all good. One more time. Keep going. And go down. Slowly or all at once, whatever your pick. It's Russian roulette. Jill roulette. That one's not bad. Not like the first time. <laughs> Here, Sean, can you look under the car? Huh? Can you look under the car, Sean? Oh, I'll get you. So if you find me under the car or somebody under the car with their orange shirt on, it's probably me. You're so full of crap. That's why I wear the orange shirt so people can find me easier. Um, okay then. So that is, now again, it, it will settle when we drive it. Have a seat. So it is facing or it is uh, sitting up high. What we will do is we will drive it around the block a couple times, probably throw diesel in the back. He loves doing that. Drive it around the block once, uh, come back, and then we'll jack it up. Make sure everything's torqued one last time, especially in the front and the back suspension. And then we'll uh, drive it for probably another 50 miles. Maybe I'll drive it to work and back once and then park it. And then again, once again, go through all the torque sequences and stuff like that. It's always good to double and triple, triple check, even though, you know, you know, you did it once. You always you something got, you're human. You're going to miss something. And stuff might settle a little bit, so we want to make sure that everybody's place safe. Also, before we started the video, we did jack up, or we did jack up the car, put a jack underneath, put the tire underneath there, and we have both wheels chalked in the front, and we had the brake on. Like I stated before, with one wheel off the back, that means one brake is off the ground. You never want to jack up both sides. We are on a slight slope because of our driveway, Yeah. but we did play it very safe and made sure everything was where it needed to be before we got under the vehicle. Um, 
again. So are we gonna talk about quality? Four. The only yeah, four. Four is quality. It's real good. Um, the only thing that is, and they made the metal to where it needed to be, but when they powder coated it, the you see shrunk. it. Yeah, the whole shrunk. So if you've ever watched some of these videos, like uh, I'll say Orange County Choppers, every time they powder coated the frame, they always needed to bore out just those pieces because the powder coat got in there and made the hole a little bit smaller. So I knew that was gonna happen or might happen, which is not that hard to just put a drill in there or a file, file it out. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to have a drill and drill bits. Just find one that's a little bit smaller and just hold it to the sides around it and it'll actually, you know, make it bore perfect. It yeah, bore it out. Uh, again, just the, uh, just the powder coating is all you need to take out. You don't need to drill the hole out any bigger or anything like that. So for me, one to five on installation, I don't know, because I really didn't do anything. Uh, this is a lot easier. This, as far as, I, God, I probably had to go with a two yeah. being fairly easy. I mean, all it is is three bolts on the top and, and a big, big bolt on the bottom. bottom. The one on the bottom's a lot of, a there's lot a lot of torque. of torque on there. So we will have to get the torque wrench. I do have some in the drawer. We will go through the process, not on camera, but again, a lot of people don't have torque wrenches. We do. Make sure you double check and triple check and quadruple check if you don't have torque wrenches that everything is torqued over a period of time. Um, We're just driving down to the service department. Yeah. If, when your oil change, like, hey, look, can you check the bolt on this? If you're nervous, if you're nervous about it, don't do it. Get somebody else to do it. Uh, I'm not nervous about suspension work. I've done it plenty of times in race cars, lifted and lowered, uh, and I have no problem getting under there and doing some of the stuff I've done. Um, as far as well, we already said we're going to lift the other ones, but we're probably not going to do that. Um, we're going to do a complete suspension. Complete suspension. Re yeah. They're, on the Black Diamond, they will have a, or they do have a long travel suspension coming out, and that's what we want to put on the Black Diamonds. Uh, long travel it actually widens the track six inches total, three inches on either side. We were looking for that. We want to put at least 37s. Maybe 40s, I don't know. We're gonna have to see what it looks like. Uh, plus, I mean, go big or go home. I live in Florida, everybody has lifted trucks. That's not lifted, but it sure as hell looks like it. I didn't lift that one at all. Well, the front end has a leveling kit on it, but the whole thing looks tall as hell. But, yeah, uh, quality, real good. I give it a, probably a four, just five because I have to drill it out. Uh, ease of installation for me, two for her, what, three? Well, I don't know because I really didn't yeah, do anything. She, she won't have I to would say. I probably have to pay somebody to do it just because yeah, the bottom because bolt the on bottom the bolt. She wouldn't be able to do on it. On a shock, I, I couldn't do it. Even, yeah, she would probably have to pay somebody. So that's probably a, a five for her, uh, four or five for her. If she had somebody to help her, that would be different. If it was just her. Now it I'd is. Somebody. <laughs> it does help having two people, uh, one to hold the jack or jack it up and and do other things. It is a, a great deal of help having somebody to help me. Uh, Jill's a perfect helper for helping me jack up the car, change the suspension, do everything. Because going and getting something while your hands are full of whatever parts you're putting on sucks. Sucks. So it's always good to have somebody there. Um, plus, if, and, uh, if anything happens where you get trapped, you get hurt, you have an extra hand there to call the, the uh, hospital or ambulance, 911, or get it on YouTube like most people <laughs> do, and then call them. So remember uh. to get it on YouTube first and then call the ambulance. That's number two. We'll go ahead and uh, end the video here. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, we will go through the tire and, well, once we get the tires, we plan on getting uh, some Nitos that we actually have on the truck, same size, minus the 17-inch rim. Uh, in fact, I think it's the same size, same height anyways. So I'm going to put those tires on this, not the rims, obviously. Just but do a switcheroo. Oh, <laughs> that's eight lug. 
Oh. That's an eight lug. Diesels are eight lugs. Oh. Eight lugs are life right there. Eight lug or life. Of course, this is six, so I'm kind of screwed. I'll add the two from your uh, Fiat two lug rims right there. Uh, super Legero, just put two lugs in, you'll be fine. <laughs> Don't do that. Anyways, uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hopefully find us enjoying, uh, enjoyable watching us getting tortured by the lift kit. Now, again, it's not real bad for somebody who knows what they're doing. If you're not, a novice. A, yeah, if you're not used to it, if you're not uh, mechanically inclined, get somebody to help you or get somebody to do it for you. Uh, pay them. If you have friends that like beer and pizza, <laughs> it's a cheap, cheap mechanic right there. Get that shit. Uh, so, okay. We'll let you go. Bye. Bye.